here on ESPN. We're with you commercial free until then with winners and losers from week 11. Jeff Saturday, who was your biggest week 11 winner? Indianapolis Colts. You heard Greg talk about it earlier in the show. How about we give them some credit, man? Phillip Rivers the last couple weeks has played lights out. He had a turnover in the game, but it was off a tip. He has pulled his weight. They have finally found the formula to win. Defense is going to help them win a championship or get them close to it. As long as Phillip Rivers can do his part, not turn the ball over, this could be a tough out in the playoffs. Dan Graziano, yours is sneaky. Who was your biggest winner? I got the Buffalo Bills. They didn't even play this week, and they're the biggest winner because the teams behind them lost. It's a rough week here on the Miami Dolphins AFC East bandwagon. That was a tough loss for them. If you still buy the Patriots as a contender, tough loss for them. The Bills sat and rested and did nothing and gained ground on the rest of the division. It's adorable that we put Jets, by the way, on the, on the bar there. It's, that didn't seem really necessary, but I like it. Greg, they who was your too. biggest loser? Uh, it's the New England Patriots. We just are one week removed from them starting to really feel themselves. Cam Newton saying, hey, I'm, I'm not a prophet, but we're starting to really ball out, only to go on the road and lose to the previously two-win Texans and look really bad in the process of doing so. So New England's got a long way to go to get to back in the playoff hunt. Yeah, I'm with you on that one, but I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Eagles because as every week goes by, they just look worse and worse. That interception that went through right there set the tone for the entire game. And yes, Greg McElroy, I know it was pouring rain, but Carson Wentz couldn't find a way <laughs> to get anything done. And it just makes louder the chorus of voices who are wondering whether Carson Wentz should be their quarterback. Forget about into the future, but even going forward now. And so you ask yourself the following question, who's going to win this terrible division where every team has three wins? Our football power index, our analytics give the Eagles the best chance at 44%, despite the fact that they have a markedly more difficult schedule going the rest of the way than the Cowboys do. A lot of people have pointed out to me, by the way, the Giants are the team playing the best of all the teams in that division. They're three and three in their last six, and those losses have been pretty close. So let's go around the horn here. McElroy, I'll start with you. Who is ultimately going to win the NFC East? I'm going with the Dallas Cowboys. And only because I want to see Stephen A's reaction throughout that, what he described as a wonderful holiday season. Uh, Y'all, they have the most proven quarterback right now in the division. I mean, Andy Dalton, granted, missed some time with COVID, got banged up, but I trust him in the regular season. In the postseason, that's a different Andy Dalton, but in the regular season, he clearly has a good rapport with CeeDee Lamb. They've got talented weapons. The offensive line can't get much worse than it's been at some points this season. And then the defense, shockingly enough, has been quite a bit better these last few weeks. So I like the trajectory that they're on. And then what is the worst division I've seen in quite a while? Uh, I'm going with the Dallas Cowboys. It is the fewest right now. Three wins through 11 weeks is the fewest that any division leader has had at this point in the season since the merger. Uh, Jeff is next. Jeff, who wins the division? I'm going Dallas Cowboys as well. I mean, you know, listen, you, you, Ezekiel Elliott had a good game against the Vikings last week. The offensive line when putting Martin out at right tackle definitely helped benefit them and solidified a little bit. But listen, this historically bad defense that they've had, the good news is the division they're in, right? You go play the Eagles, you know Wentz is going to give you a few, right? You play the Washington football team, they're not a juggernaut on offense either. So it, it, your weakness is actually a strength in the division you play in. i got to go Cowboys here. And here's the crazy part. I think it's the Cowboys hosting a home game at 6-10. and 10. How awful is that? But I think that's what's going to end up happening. <laughs> yes, I mean, 6-10 and 10 might even be generous. Uh, but someone wins that division. Division one way or the other. Graziano, who is it? Greeny, I cannot believe what I'm hearing on this program today. And I want to go back a few minutes because Stephen A. Smith had the nerve, the unmitigated gall, to come on this program and say he was disappointed in Greg McElroy, Jeff Saturday, and myself for some reasoned takes. And then in the next breath, he goes against everything he stands Preach. for and picks the Dallas Preach. Cowboys to win the NFC East. <laughs> Absolutely staggering. I am shocked and appalled. Preach. The Philadelphia Eagles are in first place, and they are going to win the NFC East. And, Greeny, I don't know if you've pointed this out before, but that tie against the Bengals earlier in the season could be a big difference maker <laughs> when we come down the stretch because a tie is better than a loss. <laughs> 
Yes, the only reason I'm rooting like crazy for the Eagles to win the division by half a game is because I was dead right on the tie. But being right on the tie doesn't change whether they win it or not. I would love to say the Giants, because all of the things being equal, I believe the Giants are playing the best of any of the teams. But then I looked at this remaining schedule, and they have a much yeah. tougher remaining schedule than the Dallas Cowboys do. I have to pick the Cowboys, and, and part of the reason is they just looked like a different team this past weekend. They looked like they had a little bit of the, the snap and the fire that we've been expecting, and, and it's not as though the Vikings were the same team that we saw at the very beginning of the season. The Vikings have played much better of light, and the Cowboys looked like an entirely different team. Their defense, as we say, couldn't possibly get worse than it was early in the season. Zeke finally ran for 100 yards. Dalton will steady the ship. Yep. I, I think 6-10 and 10 is the match number I think they wind up winning the <laughs> NFC East at six and ten and hosting a playoff game in January oh. that's where we stand in that division meanwhile Dan Graziano let's run the hurry up through a bunch of other things let's start in Chicago who's the quarterback going to be yeah they don't know yet Greeny look it's it's Nick Foles or Mitchell Trubisky both of them are dealing with injuries head coach Matt Nagy said yesterday he needs to get them out on the field for practice Wednesday, see how everyone feels. The health issue might decide it, but if they're both healthy, Nagy has to make a choice. Stick with Foles or go back to Trubisky, who he benched earlier this season. Which one gives them the best chance to get back in the playoff hunt? Arizona knows who it's starting at quarterback. It's going to be Kyler Murray, but he hurt his shoulder in their last game. Cliff Kingsbury, their head coach, said they're going to practice today, and he wants to make sure Kyler's okay airing it out, assuming he is He'll get the start against New England this coming Sunday. And this Thursday, two days from now, the Ravens are playing the Steelers. They're going to have a trouble at running back. Mark Ingram and J.K. Dobbins, according to head coach J uh, John Harbaugh, both tested positive for coronavirus. They will not be able to play in this game. There'll be Gus Edwards and uh, some backup running backs, but the Ravens are going to be short in a game they absolutely need to win to stay in the playoff hunt. Absolutely. I, and I never like to, as we bring out and have this conversation, I, I never like to conflate the coronavirus stuff with any football matters because they're totally different situations. And, and they're obviously in the big picture. People's health is so much more important. That said, this is the last thing in the world the Ravens need right now, coming as badly as they've played, coming off of that loss against Tennessee, the way that it went with their one shot to sort of rectify things on the road against their arch rival Steelers. And now they'll be without their running backs and we'll see what goes from there. Jeff Saturday, can they do it? Can they find a way to overcome yet another obstacle, be the physical team that we're all waiting to see them be again and pull off a win against Pittsburgh Thursday night? They cannot. And listen, Ingram and Dobbins are a huge reason why it's not going to happen. I mean, when you look at this team, they've lost the presence that they were. Even last year, like you think about the time of possession they had, they played keep away, right? They'd get a little lead, and they would, they would literally just sustain drive after drive and time of possession, and they would just eat you up. They're not even in the top ten this year, Greeny. When you talk about who they are as an offense, what's their identity? Is it Lamar Jackson? Is it the run game? I know their offensive line has been beaten up. But at the end of the day, you have to know who you are. And right now, they're all over the board. No explosive plays. Nothing happening down the field. I don't think they can beat Pittsburgh's defense, which has vaunted. It's